Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS, presenting to you the daily quiz for 20th June 2021, Sunday. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Question number one, total fertility rate is, option A, the total number of children born in a country in a given year divided by its population in that year. Option B, the average number of children expected to be born per woman during her entire span of reproductive period. Option C, the average number of children each woman needs to have to maintain current population levels. Option D, the number of live births per thousand persons in a population in a given year. First, let us have a look at the context. This article in the Hindu newspaper talks about the population norms in the government schemes in Assam. This article also has a reference to the fertility rate. Now let us discuss the answer. The right answer to this question is total fertility rate is the average number of children expected to be born per woman during her entire span of reproductive period. Let me explain. A reproductive age female is one who is between 15 to 49 years of age. These are the childbearing years. Now the total fertility rate represents the average number of children this woman would potentially have if she were to fast forward through all her childbearing years to one single year under all the age specific fertility rates for that year. This total fertility rate is not based on any real group of women and it is not based on counting up the total number of children actually born over their lifetime. This is an estimate or a forecast. It is not a measure of how many children each woman in a specific area has. Instead, it is based on the average number of children that a woman could potentially have throughout her lifetime. This fertility rate is expressed as a number of children per woman. A TFR of 2.1 per woman is called replacement level fertility. This is the rate at which a given population is able to produce enough offsprings to replace itself, considering that there is no immigration. Moving on to question number 2. Black money is generated in which of the following ways? Tax evasion, tax avoidance, smuggling, hawala or tax planning? Choose the correct option. The right answer to this question is option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only. Tax planning does not lead to the generation of black money. While all these other options, that is tax evasion, tax avoidance, smuggling and hawala leads to the concealment of money leading to the generation of black money. What is the context? There is an article in the Hindu newspaper today that has a reference to black money. Black money is the one in which ownership of money is completely or partially illegal. Why illegal? Because the money went concealed from the government, thereby violating laws of the country. Now here there can be two circumstances. One in which the source activity of that money is also illegal and the other where the source activity was legitimate but the income was concealed from the taxation authorities. Example for this is Hawala and smuggling. Hawala and smuggling are illicit activities themselves. The money involved in these activities is also illegal and therefore this leads to the generation of black money. Now let us talk about tax evasion, tax avoidance and tax planning. Tax evasion is where a person or an entity willfully does not pay taxes that are due to the government. This is done to avoid tax burden in part or full. It makes use of illegal means and is a result of the taxpayer employing unfair trade practices like making false statements, underreporting the income, overstating tax credit or claiming personal expenses as business expenses. Coming to tax avoidance. Under this, the entity or the person takes advantage of the loopholes in the tax laws of the country and avoids paying taxes. Here, in the case of tax avoidance, taxpayers take unfair advantage of the shortcomings in the tax rules which allows them to find new ways to avoid the payment of taxes that are within the limits of the law. 
and this generates black money. However, this is not illegal. Now coming to tax planning. Tax planning is saving upon taxes while simultaneously confirming to the legal obligations and requirements of the tax laws in your country. For example, Section 80D of the Income Tax Act allows taxpayers to claim deductions for health insurance premiums paid. This is an example of tax planning as it allows you to pay lowest taxes possible and that too legally. So the right answer to this question is option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only and tax planning does not generate black money. Moving on to question number 3. Which of the statements with respect to the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters is or are correct? Number 1. It was developed jointly by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the Council of Europe. Statement number 2. This convention deals with issues such as exchange of information, assistance in collection of taxes and tax dispute resolution. Statement number 3. All the BRICS countries are signatories to this convention. Before we discuss the answer, let us have a look at the context. A PIB article talks about the media reports of black money held by Indians in Switzerland. This article mentions about the multilateral convention on mutual administrative assistance in tax matters and states that India and Switzerland have both signed this convention and therefore automatic exchange of information is activated between the two countries for sharing of financial account information annually. That is, bulk taxpayer information is exchanged between both the countries. Now coming back to the question, this multilateral convention was developed jointly by OECD and the Council of Europe in the year 1988 and was amended in the year 2010. So statement number one is correct. Statement number two is correct because this convention provides for all possible forms of administrative cooperation between the states in the assessment and collection of taxes. This cooperation ranges from exchange of information, assistance in collection of taxes and tax dispute resolution as well. We know that India is a signatory. Besides India, all the BRICS nations are also signatories to this convention, making statement 3 also correct. Therefore, the answer to this question would be option C, 1, 2 and 3. Moving on to question number 4. Consider the following statements. Article 370 was a part of the constitution at the time of its commencement on January 26, 1950. The Kupkar Alliance is a grouping comprising various political parties and civil society organizations. The first Gupkar declaration was signed before the abrogation of Article 370. First up, let us have a look at the context. This article in the Hindu newspaper today states that the central government will meet the leaders of political parties of Jammu and Kashmir and this article also has the reference to Gupkar Alliance. Coming back to the question, statement number 1 is correct because article 370 that gave a special status to Jammu and Kashmir was a part of the constitution at the time of its commencement on 26th of January 1950. Statement number 2 is incorrect because Gupkar Alliance as we discussed is a grouping comprising of various political parties alone and not civil society organizations. On the 4th of August 2019, a day before the central government announced the abrogation of Article 370, political parties in Kashmir except for BJP met and formed the People's Alliance for Gupkar Declaration. And on the same day, the first Gupkar Declaration was signed. Therefore, Statement 3 is also correct because the first Gupkar Declaration was signed before the abrogation of Article 370. Therefore, option C, 1 and 3 only is the correct answer. Now let us have a look at a previous year question from prelims 2018. The term sixth mass extinction or sixth extinction is often mentioned in the news in the context of the discussion of option A, 
widespread monoculture practices in agriculture and large scale commercial farming with indiscriminate use of chemicals in many parts of the world that may result in the loss of good native ecosystems option b fears of a possible collision of meteorite with the earth in the near future in the manner it happened 65 million years ago that caused mass extinction of many species including those of dinosaurs option c large scale cultivation of genetically modified crops in many parts of the world and promoting their cultivation in other parts of the world which may cause the disappearance of good native crop plants and the loss of food biodiversity or option d mankind's over exploitation or misuse of natural resources fragmentation or loss of natural habitats destruction of ecosystems pollution and global climate change the right answer to this question is option d the sixth mass extinction also called as anthropocene extinction is an ongoing extinction event of species as a result of human activity the scientists suggest that the sixth mass extinction is underway this is because the world is already witnessing huge species losses every year now let us have a look at the fact of the day that is gain of function research we have taken this topic as there is an article in the hindu newspaper the debate around gain of function research which talks about the concerns being raised on this form field of research in the backdrop of the lab leak origin theory of sars cov2 first let us understand what is gain of function research Gain of function research is a field of research that is focused on growing generations of microorganisms under the conditions that cause mutations in that virus. So why is it called gain of function? This is because the pathogens are manipulated in such a way that they gain an advantage through a function. For example, say there is an increase in transmittability of the virus. also understand that there is also something called as loss of function research this involves inactivating mutations resulting in a significant loss of original function and these significant mutations might weaken the virus as well now coming back to gain of function research how is this research done what is used in this research may be genetic engineering or serial passaging This genetic engineering involves editing the genetic code to modify the virus while serial passaging involves allowing the pathogen to grow under different circumstances and then observing the changes for example the pathogen may first be grown in one environment and then a portion of it may be taken and allowed to grow in a different set of controlled environments and then these will be compared with the original pathogens but these manipulations can make these viruses more deadly or more transmissible this kind of research may carry inherent risks such as biosafety and biosecurity risks and therefore they are referred to as dual use research of concern that is such research may result in the benefits for humanity but there is also a potential to cause harm if such manipulated pathogens escape from labs they may even cause pandemics the next question you would have in your mind would be why allow such a pathogen or virus to gain advantage this is because such experiments allow the scientists to better predict emerging infectious diseases and also develop vaccines also another reason why this sort of a research is done is because similar to viruses mutating in controlled environments there can also be mutations outside these controlled environments like how the corona virus is mutating additionally there can also be something called as escape mutants that is the drug resistant mutants to study such mutations and also develop new vaccines this sort of a research is necessary how is gain of function research regulated in india in india such activities are regulated as per the manufacture use import export and storage of hazardous microorganisms or genetically engineered organisms or cell rules 1989 now coming to the question of whether or not such research should be allowed the scientists have a divided opinion on this as on one hand it could be fatal 
while on the other hand such research is necessary for the development of vaccines therefore the world health organization is in the process of developing a global guidance framework for its member nations to follow the world health organization has also developed a guidance document for dual use research of concern in life sciences that is all for today thank you for being with us keep watching and keep learning